Well, good morning, everyone. Um, as she said, I'm Jenny Thorson, and I know that's not what it looks like, but I promise that's how it's said. So next time you meet me, make sure you uh, pronounce it correctly. Um, and as she said, I'm the data curation librarian here at UNL, and I'm here to just give a little ditty about uh, the services that the libraries provide in relation to data management. Um, so can I just get an idea of how many faculty we have here today? Okay, and students? All right, awesome, thanks. So, a partner in your success, I don't know if you UNL people have seen this. Um, it's the library's motto or, I don't know, tagline or something. I actually have no idea what exactly it is, but I really like it because I think it has a good ring to it. And um, it's succinct in a very simple way to present our role here at UNL. You know, from the undergraduate who's just trying to uh, get registered on the Wi-Fi on their first day of class, to the postdoctoral student who's writing up their dissertation, to a long-term faculty, a faculty member who's working on a research project. Um, it's really our library's emphasis. We focus our library's emphasis on our services, our mission and our values around the notion of ensuring that the students, the faculty, and the researchers here at UNL are fully equipped to succeed in all of their endeavors. So the libraries are continually evolving um, because we, you know, much like Prim and the Office of Research, we get very excited when our researchers succeed. Um, and to support the success, we need to be agile and constantly transforming and meeting faculty and student needs. Um, so I was talking with several people yesterday. They, they told me that, you know, they said when they were undergraduates, they were in the library a lot. Um, but now that they're either doctoral students or they're faculty, they're like never there at all because um, they can get everything they need without walking into the library. They can get everything online. And that's one way that we've kind of transformed our services um, over the past decades to serve the needs of our campus community. Over the last few years, um, this evolution has included some increasing support for researchers in the world of data management and data management planning. So the Data Creation Committee was formed within the libraries to exchange information on e-science and data curation and to discuss its implications for the UNL libraries. Um, the groups also served as a forum where librarians would host discussions with experts from outside the library so who could discuss the topics that are relevant to e-science so that we could learn more um, as a library how we can serve our community here better. So the libraries began providing data management plans, workshops and consultations over the past few years. We started the UNL data repository where researchers could deposit their inactive data sets. And about six months ago, we hired an extremely enthusiastic and charming librarian um, to this newly created data curation librarian position. Um, so uh, if you haven't met her yet, you should go say hi. I hear she's really a little weird, but pretty nice, I promise. So it's been really an exciting time for us as we explore this, these new areas of service and collaboration on the, an area that's really moving to the forefront of discourse across academia and beyond. Um, how we manage our data as researchers, as an institution, and really as a global community. And this obviously isn't a very easy issue to tackle, as I'm sure you're all aware. Um, we, well, data, we really enjoy data and it's really exciting. We didn't just get together to eat some really yummy food and um, talk about how, you know, data, we've got this all figured out. You know, there are a lot of really big challenges, not just with big data, but with small data as well that our researchers are facing every day. And so we're here to learn from each other and to connect with students um, and to work together and hopefully come together to tackle these data issues. Uh, so yesterday, Jeff Gerard, he talked about some of the data challenges um, and how you, know, you can ask Google to get some help on it. But some of these are also areas where the library can be very beneficial and helpful as well. Things like data discovery, data labeling, sharing data. These are things that we know a lot about at the libraries. And we've also been um, managing data for a really long time, as uh, Heidi mentioned yesterday in her speech. Um, that's something that we've done a lot of. Our metadata in our books is something we've had a lot of experience with. So anyway, enough of that. I'm um, tasked this morning to talk with discussing the library's part that 
that the libraries currently play and the services that we currently offer in relation to data management. So first, I just wanted to, to get on the same page um, um, and define data management as the process of overseeing data that's been generated during a research project. I like it because it's a kind of clear definition. You can always find any definition you want. I just, you know, you just end up choosing the one that sounds best to you. And I like this one. Um, so it starts with creating a plan for how you're going to manage your data before your project starts and continues after the project, like throughout the project and until after it's completed and you determine where you're going to preserve it and how you're going to provide access to it if you are. And data management is important for many reasons. It's important for validity so that you can prove that your research has, is actually valid. Um, there's a website called Retraction Watch that you can look at occasionally. And there are times people, this, I'm sure all of you have known of situations where an article has been retracted or a piece of it has been retracted because they could not come up with the data to validate the research um, contained in the article. Reuse is also another really important for data management. Um, we talk a lot about sharing and about being able to um, you reuse other people's data, but also reusing your own data. Um, sometimes, like, I will look at something that I worked on two weeks ago, and I have no idea what's happened with it if I haven't written something up for myself telling me what it was. So I think um, with that great presenter yesterday during lunch, he had a chart of how the information kind of slowly falls down from a project until eventually the researcher dies and then the information's completely gone. Um, the farther away you get from working on a project, the less you remember. So being able to reuse your own data is another re a great reason for data management. And another one is funding. We're going to hear from several funding agencies after this. Um, and increasingly, funding agencies are beginning to require data management plans to be included. They really are interested in preservation of data and of potential reuse for this data. So it's become a really big emphasis over in lots of different arenas. And one other arena that I wanted to mention was in publications. The journal data archiving policy is um, a policy that where journals are requiring as a condition, condition of publication that the data supporting the results in the paper should be archived in an appropriate public archive. Um, so this kind of goes, this goes back to the sharing, but it also goes back to validity. So you deposit your article um, and the, the people who are the reviewers are able to look at the data itself to validate the research in the article. And this has become really common. These are just, this is just a list of some of, especially in the sciences, some of the journals that are now requiring data deposits. So you can notice the big ones are generally nature and science that um, people really focus on. So that's kind of a basic overview of data management. So we're a little bit more on the same page there. Um, now I'd like to highlight the services that the libraries offer in relation to data management. We offer workshops, consultations, we have the UNL data repository, we offer data registry, and um, we can assign persistent identifiers. So data management has become a regular in our general workshop series at the library. We also partner with the Office of Research to offer a data management planning workshop um, during the new ramp every semester. And these cover, generally cover the basics of data management, um, you know, especially how it relates to writing a data management plan and particularly for federal funding agencies. We discussed like the data life cycle and the importance of managing data throughout the duration of a research project and beyond. Um, we give an overview of things like storage, security and backup, file formats, privacy, confidentiality, things like that. Um, in addition to these more general sessions, though, we off also offer workshops on request. So if you have some burning question or some knowledge that you want to know more about in data management, um, like locating data repositories or some file organization and naming conventions, this is an excellent opportunity for you to get a more tailored um, approach and a tailored instruction to, to your particular discipline, your particular research context, and your own interests. And these are just some of the different topics that we can cover in a data management workshop. Now, workshops are really great for a group setting and as a way to become more knowledgeable in data management issues. However, for more personal attention, um, you can 
have an individual consultation with a library. And I think this is one of our excellent services. You can come sit down with one of us. Um, I have a great office, by the way. Um, this nice little table where you can sit down and chat. And we can talk about your particular needs. And so when you're applying for a grant that requires a data management plan, um, you can set up a consultation, then you can, before you even write a word of the plan, and we can talk about, you know, give you some guidance on um, what it should look like, what it should contain, how it should be structured. Um, we can give sample data management plans so you can see how these things come together. Uh, and, or you can come to us after you've already written one and we can go over and um, help you revise it and have a second or third pair of eyes really thinking about it. You know, I'm sure you guys know that grant proposals have a lot of components and the data management plan is just one. Um, and the guidelines and recommendations can sometimes be a bit vague and dispersed, um, and they aren't necessarily all in one place. NSF in particular can be really challenging because uh, you know, the, NS, the agency has its own guidelines and then all of the divisions and the directorates can have more specific ones, and the solicitations can have guidelines for this plan as well. Um, so it's important to, to look at all of that together and having a second person um, come with you and look at that to try to figure that out can be really helpful. Um, the other reason I would suggest this is uh, that you have a consultation is that data management plans can be really unique because we can give you sample plans, but really, um, actually this is something I was talking with uh, Tisha Mullen in the Office of Research earlier this week. She says she actually says the exact same thing about every proposal, uh, or grant proposal, that every single one is very unique um, because it is and it really depends on the discipline, the project, and the funding agency. So having that one-on-one -on -one consultation can really be beneficial. And we, of course, encourage you to come to us early. We can help you out as, um, we'll, we'll help you out the day of, but if you can come, you know, weeks in advance, months even, that'll give us a lot more time to have a more personal um, discussion with you and really help you make it a high quality data management plan. Now, something that's been, um, that we've been working on at the libraries is our UNL data repository. Now, I don't know, how many of you know about the digital commons? or have used the digital commons to deposit a, a journal article or maybe a presentation that you've given. It's our institutional repository, um, but, and it's filled a really fantastic need. It's one of the top, or most, has, has the highest number of um, articles or things in their second most, I think, after Michigan State. And, um, and it's, it's been really fantastic, but it does not serve the need um, for data, making data available, and that's been a challenge, um, something that we've noticed, especially with people with smaller grants, maybe smaller data sets, um, that don't have anywhere and don't have funding for where they can put their data. So um, that really is what led to us creating the data repository, and it's where you can deposit your inactive data sets, so perhaps at the end, a conclusion of the project, just basically something that you're not massaging anymore, you're not um, changing. Uh, you can embargo these data sets so you can deposit it and give a certain amount of time before anybody else can look at it. And um, it's a really fantastic option if there's no, especially if you can't locate a repository that's perfect for your data. Um, I was talking to another researcher uh, the other day about how often with a lot of his bigger data sets, he has, they have repositories, he knows exactly where that's going, but there's kind of this mixed bag of other data that he's not really sure where it should end up. He'd like to make it available, but he doesn't know how. And we could potentially be an option for that as well. We like to encourage sustainable file formats, so we guarantee 20 years if you use a sustainable format, because that's something that's easier for us to maintain. Um, only five years if it's a uh, non-sustainable format. And we are currently in the process of redesigning this. And this is something that I've been working on for the last six months, especially. Um, we have a brand new um, preservation system that's become the back end for our data repository and our other digital assets at the library. And so we're working on revamping the website to connect with this new preservation system. Um, we're hoping to have the demo site up in a few weeks and should be live with it by, the, um, by next semester as well. So this is just a snapshot of what the website will look like. And I just wanted to do a quick talk on kind of how this process happens. You, the researcher, will deposit your data. 
I can't find my thing. Oh, it's just very small. Um, and the UNL data repository. And then we have a manual review um, and deposit the data into Rosetta, which is our preservation software. And then we assign a DUI, and I'll talk about what that is. It's just a persistent identifier um, through the EZID system. Then we add, have to add that DOI back into the data sets metadata in Rosetta. And then we harvest the metadata to the UNLDR through um, the OAI, uh, OAI standard. And right now, so it is a bit of a manual process at the moment. So it's something that um, as it grows, we will consider making this a less manual process. Um, but we really noticed that every data set is so unique that often we really need that manual review um, to look over the data and to make sure it's going in and with appropriate metadata so that it can be discovered and potentially reused. Uh, this is a, just a little bit more about a preservation software. Uh, it's a management system for long-term preservation. It includes things like virus checks, fixity checks. Um, it has format validation. So we've Notice, so it will check not only, um, it, it will uh, try to identify what the format is, and if it can't, um, it throws up a flag. And it also checks to make sure that it follows, these formats follow the technical specifications of the format as far as it can. So like we've had issues with, if you put a PDF in there, um, it, even though it looks like a PDF, it opens like a PDF. Um, there are technical issues with it because, um, because it wasn't created correctly. So that's something that we can check before we put it in so that we can fix it so that we can really focus on the preservation of a high quality um, data and data set and format. Um, we also, it also allows us to do format risk assessment. So whether if that format's going to be deprecated or something, we could potentially create a plan for moving to a new format. So the deposit costs, um, Every UNL researcher gets 50 gigabytes free that they can deposit in our, um, in our repository. And so this is per researcher, not per deposit. But, and then after that, it goes on the sliding scale um, of a fee. Um, and it's fee-based. And this is something that, so it makes a great option as a low cost possibility um, for depositing data. In connection with our data repository, we have a data registry. So if you've deposited your data somewhere else, but you'd just like to make it more discoverable, you can just enter metadata in about it in our repository, um, including where it's located, and it will be discoverable through the, deposit, the repository and through the UNL's website, our um, quick single search website. The next thing I wanted to talk about was persistent identifiers. Um, uh, do most people know about persistent identifiers? Okay. Uh, yes, no, maybe so. Uh, well basically, they're just um, a better way of identifying data. So if you've ever read a research article, and then at the end you look at the, re the references, and one of them has a URL, and you click on it, and then you get this wonderful message, which I think has to be the most hated number on the internet. Um, and, and then you have to attempt to go find this article yourself because the, it's moved. It could be on the same website, but they've just changed their information architecture. And it's a really frustrating thing. So this is one of the things that a persistent identifier can do. It separates the, you, the unique identification from the actual location. Um, and it can also promote citation and tracking. So if people are citing you with different URLs and you move around to a different URL, it's harder to track compared to having a DOI or a persistent identifier, which is also being these also in um, a bigger world of persistent identifiers. So the libraries are now able to assign them. And it's a, a very simple thing. Um, you just enter in the metadata, the small information about it, and the location, and it even prints out uh, a citation preview. So it gives you how you can cite this resource. So this is what I will do, what I do when something comes into the data repository. We assign a DOI to it. Um, and then if 10 years down the road we change repository softwares and everything's going to change its um, URL, then we can go in and um, modify the location 
Um, and, but if somebody has cited you and cited that data set, they can still be redirected to where it is now. So that's a quick overview of what we offer at the UNL libraries. Um, and it's just, like I said, it's you know, a very evolving world. We're really changing and we're really excited about where things are going. And we're excited for partnerships and collaborations um, and to provide service across campus. Thank you.